Hey, I'm Kat Self back with the AttackCon couch. Um, and we have Ivan and Andy here with us today. So we kind of are wrapping up the day. It's going to be the last three talks. Um, so we're not going to keep you too long because I know you guys are like literally these conversations and then beer, right? Like <laughs> yeah. it's like security conference. That's when the real work's done, right? It, of course. Actually, it's <laughs> funny that you say that because we were talking, I was talking with some other speakers and we were all talking about how we come here and we do these presentations, but the real work is like these side conversations where we're just connecting with each other. And exactly. Like, Right. Like, oh, you have this too. Like, I am dealing with that same issue. And like, you're an expert <laughs> in this space. So um, during your talk, which I loved the orchestra, like that was a fantastic analogy. I, I really want to hear even more about that. But you also mentioned a task force. So what tell us more about that task force? Yes. Um, basically, like I said, when I got to Simplify last April, I, I saw a need to start exploring how to really utilize attack in SOAR. And um, that's where me and Andy met because he did a webinar on attack. And I was like, wait a minute, someone did a webinar. I need to meet him and become his best friend. Um, and then I gathered a small group of individuals and, and we went to leadership and they said, yeah, go for it. You know, you can, you can use work time and, and, you know, be able to do it as a main project. And, it, you know, they, no promises on product timelines or anything, but they did say that, you know, go for it, you know, see, see how far you can take it. And so um, I, I put together a team of SEs, PS engineers, developers, and we were able to start, you know, working out what would be some integrations with ATT&CK that would really use automation to a level where it hasn't been. And that's where we got the idea of, you know, secondary investigations, um, using the data components, hopefully one day um, participating in the attack sightings um, and using more of the CTID tools. I, I'm just blown away by how many tools there are, like Workbench. I just learned about the attack flow where you're going to have chains of attacks. So that definitely plays into, um, you know, what Andy was talking about, about, you know, looking at the groupings of them. And so we're really excited, you know, to be working with all that and the fact that there's all these wonderful APIs for us to play with. Andy, did you want to say anything about your experience? Yeah, I mean, the only thing to add really is um, I feel like we're always uh, 10 steps behind these guys because when we started to put MITRE into the, into the, the kind of like the front end, the experience thing, oh, I really need something to, oh, yeah, that's right, MITRE have kind of already got that done. Oh, I need to build it in like the Navigator. Oh, no, hang on, they've literally built Navigator. Oh, okay. We need a way to put it. Oh, no, they've already done uh, kind of sighting. So I feel like these guys are so many steps ahead that we, you know, when we're trying to deploy and implement it in the in solution to make it look pretty, you're like, yeah, I think we're always one step behind. These guys are just too good. That's so kind. And <laughs> it does not feel like reality at all, <laughs> but so kind. Because I can tell you on this end, like, we'll talk to so many subject matter experts, and it's like, oh, we've got so much work to do. There's so much not done yet. You know, yeah. like, oh, we've got to capture this. And like Matt was talking about the campaigns and we're like, we need your help. Like, how do we even scope these things, right? Like, how do we do this in a very intentional way? So I so love hearing you mention other projects that are MITRE. And I love hearing that you think that they're so helpful because that's like, okay, <laughs> like we all work really hard. Yeah, It's totally useful. Good. That makes me happy. Yeah, just speaking real, real fast on the future. I, I know I've been, you know, the, these wonderful side conversations that we talk about. One thing I've been doing is going around with everyone I can talk to and being like, what do you see as the next thing? Yeah. And, and where are we going to, you know, where are we going to go with it? So that's been really exciting that we've got this in person again, because it's a lot easier to have those conversations in person. And I, you know, for anybody who's never come to an attack con, come to 4.0 because it rocks. It's literally the happiest place on earth. Aww. And so, yeah, come to attack on. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love it. You are so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. I really, all right. So I will say this last conversation, like the last question. So like what drove this whole orchestra? Like, I think you all hit to it in your presentation, but like what drove this whole orchestration, like that visual? And that actually came from a teaching um, tool, a presentation I made. Um, and that presentation was called the so what of attack <laughs> okay. because we, we got that question a lot from different people that didn't have, you know, the SecOps and CTI backgrounds, you know, what, what, what is attack? Um, I had developers tell me, oh, I, I know how to program everything with it. I know the JSON sticks, but I don't know what it does. And so I needed a, a simple way of telling them how it affected my life 
insecurity, what it gives me the value. And for me, it gave me a way to visualize it. And for me, it's music. Um, you know, like I said, I literally, my fishing data is the pianos, the EDRs, the violins, and then I start hearing the drums, which is the network data. And that's, it gives me that power to understand what's going on. And, and once I can do that, then we can start sorting it out. We can start figuring out what's important, what's not. And that's, that's a power that attack gives us. It's a language, you know, I brought up the Rosetta Stone. You know, it's a language that connects so many different levels of data and viewpoints and biases. It's just mind blowing what it does. And the only way I can describe it is music. I love the fact that you bring such a diverse background and like other passions into it. <laughs> I'm a history major. I love that because like <laughs> yeah. that's, it takes all of it, right? Like not yeah. everyone understands it in the same exact way. So, mm -hmm. and the fact that you both can collaborate together and you have yeah. different aspects and strengths to bring to the table is really difficult. I always say he makes me look good. <laughs> I mean, you guys make each other look good. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to be with us. Like all of the work that I went into the presentation. So we really, really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Yes, 100%. Very much so. So um, we're wrapping up the day. And now we have just one of my favorite people. Um, so this needs no introduction. Can I just say I love your presentation style? Well, thank you. It's all based on you, Kat. <laughs> I was just watching and inspired by this broadcast all day. I was like, how do I bring that cat energy? Oh my it's gosh. an homage to you. We actually redid our slides 13 minutes beforehand. But, you know, I believe it. Mm. I go. am the coolest cat I know. <laughs> all right, so how is it at the end of the day? Like, you've been able to see all these different presentations and in-person conference, you said. This is the first one yeah. you've been back at? First one I saw, yeah. I did cyber work on earlier, and then this is it, so... Only the best conferences get me out of my house. <laughs> Obviously. So what has been your favorite talk out of the day? I love history and I love threat intelligence. So I do think the keynote for me was really something I enjoyed quite a bit mm -hmm. because I like being able to pull lessons from the past and pull it to the future because not a lot has actually changed. So I think Selena's mm -hmm. keynote really resonated with me, uh, especially because it really set up well for our talk, which was kind of going through the, the tactical version of the strategic problems she brought up. So I liked it as a one-two punch of just like, she brought up a lot of aspects of synthesizing information and getting it through where we were providing a tool to actually do that for analysts who are trying to do these tasks. So I like that part quite a bit. And Olaf's talk, um, always a, a great person with great information that I learned a lot from. That his talk is both of those talks have been mentioned a couple of times today, and I agree. And it's been beautiful parallels throughout. Like the storytelling has been interwoven through multiple presentations, and then everything from what you all have been releasing, and then how different presentations have stacked have just been really beautiful. No, it's a credit to the, and I know I've said this before, but there's an art of doing a conference where there's a, I can't believe I'm using this word, but synergy all the way through, <laughs> and that actually happened today, which was fun. No, um, so. We're wrapping up the day. Um, everyone's kind of like had, well, try to give everyone an opportunity to um, kind of share something like we have these amazing viewers that have been on all day streaming. Um, is there anything that you kind of want to tell them whether like, but yet I'll give you a targeted question so you actually have something to answer. Mm. Ooh, how about that? Um, what are one of the obstacles that you see a lot of people getting into this field and how have you seen them overcome it with grace? <laughs> Silence. Um, the biggest thing I see people getting into is it cybersecurity or attack? Because we can go either way here. Your the dealer's no, choice. No, no, no. See, I threw it back okay, at you. Cyber Uno, <laughs> Uno, reverse that. <laughs> cybersecurity. For getting into cybersecurity, the single biggest thing that I've seen being accelerated for people's careers is networking. Um, mm. I think a lot of people get into cybersecurity because they like the tech. And tech is a huge part of it. You have to have the chops. But the reality is the way people's careers advance is through other people. And unless you have godlike abilities in front of the keyboard, which there are very few, you have to be able to have the personalities. You have to be understand who's there, get new opportunities. And the way you do that is through exposure at work. Well, places like this, uh, Sands, where we met, actually, Sands yeah. uh, Hunting Summit, other places like that are great ways to get more exposure to different people and talk that opens up a lot of new opportunities. And I think that's the biggest thing I see people 
have a problem with who are new to cyber or getting into this career field is they feel pigeonholed. Uh, they don't see how many different areas there are from extremely technical reverse malware engineering to very non-technical, but just as valid and just as useful on more of a intelligence side or writing. And I think there's a lot of possibilities on either side that people aren't aware of until they see that and have representation shown to them. I think that is a really, really valid point. Um, I've heard like the terms like, oh, well, it's clicks, you know, and like your people. And I actually called out, um, I was talking to one of the, who's now a VP at, of cybersecurity at Target. And I was like, what is it about these clicks? Like, apparently you have to be one of someone's people. And she was like, okay, let me break this down for you. Um, when you say your people, what you're actually what saying. What do you mean by you people? Yeah, like, what do you mean by you people? Um, she was like, really what it is, is as you go throughout your career, you find people that have just proven themselves time and time again that whether it's work that they want to do or they don't want to do, they'll do it and they'll do it well. Absolutely. And like that's a discipline that I feel like we often glance over, right, on like the being the god of the keyboard. There's but an aspect of there, I think, uh, we had a wonderful conversation with my team last night and we were discussing the problems of cyber and the, 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 which is predicated by, there's a wonderful gentleman, Scott Roberts, who wonderful threat intel man. Yeah. And he has this concept kind of going over. It's extremely difficult for threat intelligence to become larger because the skill sets are so difficult. Yeah. And one of my very unpopular opinions is threat intel is dead. And I say that because I don't believe it's possible to scale up the skills required as the industry is today. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have very large CSPs with very mature threat intel shops. You're gonna have consumers of threat data and you're gonna have creators of threat intelligence. And I think that is going to be where we start having this big divide. So the question was, well, how do people learn these things? Like you can't go to school for this. You can't yeah. go to college for this. Like you can get a CS degree with a security focus and great, you know how to code secure C, but what are you doing how does that help you with anything we just talked about today? Yeah. And the big thing we came through is the reality is this is an apprenticeship program. You like that is how we've designed this. And going back to the history lessons that Selena talked about earlier today, you find yourself someone who's teaching like, okay, you've proven yourself. Let me show. And there's been lots of great research. Like anthropologists have embedded themselves in socks and actually study the way socks train each other and kind of go through this. And we're still not getting great of getting out of that. Um, but I think there's still this concept. I, you know, you could argue it's a debutante ball where I'm sponsoring you and we're, I'm going to walk you around and say, this is Kat. I vouch for her. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll spend time with this person because you said so. And we're not going to get much further until that expands, but I also haven't found a great way around it. That's true. Honestly, that's actually the way I wound up getting a lot of exposure in Absolutely. the field was like, like David Bianco was amazing. And like, he did a co-presentation with met. me and that's David how Bianco, we met. Yep. You know, and like 100%, it's like allies in the field that like uh -huh. take that risk to be able to like, I will stand by you and like help you along this path because I know it's hard. Yeah, and to see something I'm passionate about. There's allies, there's advocates, and there's mentorship. And I think yes. people think the bar for mentorship is extremely high, but advocating is as simple as making sure the door is open for everyone to walk through and yes. anyone can do that. Oh my God, I love that. Yes, 100%. Ah, uh, okay. That is so well said that I don't even know if anything can actually come after that. So, um, I know, just drop my <laughs> I'm not a bomb, it. it's not going to work. I actually want to keep talking to you about this, but we have the last speakers um, that we need to bring on, and uh, this is our service for the audience. So, um, But seriously, thank you so much for your presentation, the thank work that goes into us. it. Wonderful. I loved it. So and Thanks, everyone, for watching. It was very fun. You should have come. It was much better in person. <laughs> But we're super glad that you're online and that you were with us because you all, the best meme means you get the attack flag. So um, definitely like do your research on memes. There was a great one from South Park earlier that I personally loved because it definitely described getting wider and not taller. Um, so definitely take a look at that one. Um, be sure to heart or re retweet the ones that you guys really like uh, or just comment on them. So that way we can track which ones you like. So because that's, that's just as important. Um, so our last speakers of the day that we're going to be able to interview with. Um, ah, I love I love things changing up last minute. It's awesome. Um, uh, so I'm Stefan Chenet from Attack IQ. 
<laughs> nice to meet you, Kat. <laughs> thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you. I love the fact that you all talked about Jupiter Notebooks. Like, thank you. Because that is how I, we did. So when I was on Target's threat hunting team, that was actually something that we moved towards because just like you said, like it was so much easier to use a Jupiter Notebook to kind of do these live presentations. And we would do these hunts. And when we were doing this hunt kind of readout, we would actually have this Jupiter Notebook that had all the data that we had like painfully cleaned at this point, right? And then we could just quickly move through that data. So I really appreciated your walk through that. So thank you so much. Yeah, we, I mean, th I think Jose and I th have used Jupyter Notebooks so much. And then we've helped you know, our customers and our users use Jupyter Notebooks. And at first, it's just to sift through the data. Yeah. And you kind of look through it, interacting with kind of a, a workbook. But as there got to be more and more data and the audience was the executive or someone on the tactical team, it's like, this is a great opportunity to use it for presentations. And Jupyter Notebooks allows for markdown language. And so you can really start to visualize mm -hmm. and paint a great picture, get that emotional reaction, drive some, some kind of you know, actionability. But with the Jupyter Notebook, it's a PowerPoint or a, mm -hmm. like an Excel file, you know, something just more interactive. So during your presentation, you made this comment that I was like, huh, I don't know. Like, I'm curious how you guys have faced this. Like, um, I know for a lot of the leadership meetings, normally there was always like we need to know how to answer questions during meetings right mm -hmm. like if you don't have an answer like if there's an anomaly and i cannot speak to it that is not a good thing right um but you all talked about using like live data like how would you address that with a jupyter notebook if you're using live data i mean that's a good it's a good question <laughs> right because well you know in i think in our experience um you know, we've probably, with a certain customer, had dozens of Jupyter Notebooks, maybe for a certain customer, not hundreds. Um, we've dealt with hundreds of Jupyter Notebooks, but within those notebooks, that customer has gone back to them on a daily or weekly basis. So hopefully it's not so, you know, outrageously different than what they expect. Mm. Um, but what, what most of our, our users and our customers are using the Jupyter Notebooks for is to kind of they're trying to drive the conversation. You know, yes, they're being prepared to answer a question, but instead of getting in that like reactionary response kind of driven like mode, they want to come to the table saying, hey, here's the agenda we want to set. So here's the set of Jupyter notebooks that we want to drive a certain emotional response. So it's strategic, we want to get support on these resources. If it's tactical, it might be like, here are clearly detection logic rules we need in this particular area. Yeah. And so they're trying to set the agenda with Jupyter Notebook, driving it from a data kind of viewpoint versus uh, just telling them and presenting through a PowerPoint, let me show you the data, let me drive mm -hmm. the agenda to make some changes. So there was a lot of really positive feedback on the scenario um, and, uh, and how, how you guys went over it. Um, and then one question from Slack, and actually, let's see, I have it written down from who, B, all right, so, I don't know if these are like abbreviated names. I'm assuming it is. It's like B Mara Sky. Um, but they wanted to know if there was like, well, there was a couple of things, right? One was, are there any GitHub examples that you guys have released? So that way, you know, it's much easier to walk through these things when you're like, okay, that's the code. Yep. Right? Yeah, that, that's something that we talked about. We had quite a few people kind of ask the same question. And I think we'll probably put something together and, you know, from our perspective, put together some base data sets. So to your point, all the data we've pulled, all the data we've manipulated, if you can get in that point, I think you can get some of the output that, that we put together with the, with the folks that we work with. We've done quite a bit, so uh, be happy. And I think that's part of the whole point, too, about the notebooks is you can easily share them, right? And it's not only just plugging it in and, and getting the output, but for analysts, see well, you know the iterations that Stefan did with some of our customers, see how that logic ends up going, right? Where do we start with the raw data and how do we drive it to provide that message that we want to set the stage for? Uh, people can learn from that perspective too. And that's the beauty of it is that code is there, you know, they're not abstracted and they can modify it. When their executive says, what about this? They can just change it as well. So that's the beauty of it. No, that's fantastic. All right. So then there, another question from Slack was, um, for those that want to drive the scenario um, on their own, right? Like where can they look for the, that data, right? Like that's actually, there was a lot of questions on that on how do they find that data? <laughs> Well, I'll take this one. So in terms of the scenario, uh, I mean, I guess, are we referring to setting the agenda? Or are we talking about, you know, part of getting that data is first uh, understanding, you know, what is the scenario that you want to drive from a, a you know, attack 
um, adversary emulation perspective. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of free tools, obviously. Cal Atomic Cal Red Team? Atomic Red Team, Caldera. There's a lot of mm -hmm. things that you can run. And then, you know, Jose and I come from the commercial side where, you know, for the last almost nine years, we've been building an Attack IQ, an adversary emulation platform. So mm -hmm. lots of choices out there in terms of how you want to generate that data, yeah. right? One of the things that we, um, and I should say Jose has taken part in is the Center for Threat and Form Defense and the attack flows and that new release. And so Attack IQ has pivoted a lot towards that, as has many, many vendors in the space to look at emulating uh, threat actors, not just atomically, you know, because there's various security controls that won't catch it if just one technique is yeah, emulated. Yeah, it's a combination of techniques. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so in the presentation we gave today with Jupyter Notebooks, we focused much more on attack flows. How do you emulate that attack behavior? Um, through an attack flow, an attack graph, an attack chain, so that they are uh, judged, the adversary behavior is judged after a sequence of number of things have happened. Mm -hmm. And so once you have that data, uh, important part of any emulation is that you have what has the attacker done and then what has the defender been able to detect or prevent. Once you have that data, now Jupyter Notebooks come into play. How do you gotcha. want to present it? So for the viewers and for the people that ask the questions, essentially get your simulation set up first yes. and get the data from that simulation and then play the Jupyter Notebooks of the scenario. Yeah, I, I think, and then my feedback to that, that person as well would be, you already have some data, start with that, right? At the end of the day, you know where you have gaps, you know where you have concerns, you know where you need more support from your management. So whether it's vulnerability scans, whether it's a pen test from last month, right? All that information that you have, pull that in, start using that. And then at the end of the day, right, start working towards using uh, you know, Atomic Red Team and collecting that information, collecting the information at the level that we had in our presentation, right? But you have something that you can start with today and build on top of that is, is going to be my suggestion too from that perspective. I love that. So yeah. what kind of like, you guys did actually mention this a little bit in your presentation, but like what were some driving factors for you all to kind of like come up with this idea for the Jupyter Notebook and then realize like this is actually really helpful for a lot of people. We should present on this. Yeah, I, I think for us, we, we started using Jupyter Notebooks internally at the company. Like, hey, I would put something together and I just threw it over the fence and said, go look at what I did and how I got there. And, you know, slowly but surely the developers were using this as a way of, you know, quickly iterating and putting something together because it's not just reporting, you have full Python capability. So anything that you can orchestrate or manage, you can do it through these notebooks. And I think we saw that kind of pick up like fire internally with our customers or internally as at our company, right, and our developers, then we started showing it to our customers. They really like that. And, you know, I think the call to action of our talk that we wanted is start using what you're already using today, right, in this different way that you maybe not have thought about. And, um, yeah, I think that that, that that was the driver for us, just seeing that kind of uh, get picked up, uh, just creating this collaboration that I didn't see otherwise was one of the main reasons why, I, I you know, I wanted to talk about this today. Yeah, I mean... I mean, very similarly, um, I think, you know, once you start doing something internally and it picks up speed and then you show others outside how to do it, we thought, you know, MITRE ATTACCON was the perfect place to present it, this very collaborative community, right? And Jupyter Notebooks being this ability to, you know, build out a notebook, uh, share it amongst the community going, here's how we're actually presenting the data in real time um, within one security team, another security team might pick it up. But as you said before, these Jupyter Notebooks aren't in a Git repository somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to, you know, start maybe collaborating with someone who wants to start that effort, uh, certainly helping to show what we've done. But I think this is a great effort that could get started. No, I love that. I think that's, that's beautiful. Like just the whole idea of like that innovation that you have internally and then like celebrating that and then like recognizing it and then testing it out, right, in these safe environments so you can fail fast and then seeing it work and then very intentionally bringing it to other collaborative en environments like that's fantastic so we really really appreciate all of the work that went into it and just the i guess you could say like the pause where you guys could like take that moment to reflect back and then like realize the impact of something and then intentionally bring it forward to the rest of us so thank you so much we really really appreciate you being here yeah thank you so yeah thanks so um that wraps up our day. Thank you guys so much for paying attention and, and just being with us today online. I know it's tough. We make jokes like you should be in here in person, but the reality is you can't, right? Like, like not everyone can attend the conference, but that doesn't mean that you don't get to be part of it. Like you are a part of it here. 
Like you guys are the only ones in the meme contest, um, only ones with the flag. Um, and you're also the only ones on this live stream. So the, the people that were in person didn't get that. So hopefully you all got to enjoy being able to see the human side of all of our presenters. Um, incredible people that definitely put a lot of time and passion into all of these presentations. So thank you guys so much for being with us today. We look forward to kicking it off again tomorrow. And I will definitely be reviewing these memes. So bring your game. <laughs>